emodels.co.uk. Make something awesome. Shut up and sit down. Hello, gang. Fester here from eModels, and we have got for you today the Yamaha Tenere 660cc Paris Dakar bike. And yeah, we are going to have fun with this bad boy. As you can see there, there's a little map there of the rally that goes from Paris to Dakar. And this was the 1/9th scale bike from 1986. So let's have a quick looky loo in the box, show you what we get. Obviously the obligatory instruction booklet. Sprue guides there just on the left. Some bits and pieces there. Some do's and don'ts in the written text. And then you've got your exploded diagrams of all the different components for the bike build. Different suspension, you've got your engine cooling filters, you've got all your rear suspension, frame tubes, all of that gubbins, and a single link chain. Oh my god. And these are clever little sprues, these. They all click together like so. And then you warm up a spudger and just melt it together. And that will then give you all your chain links like a working chain. Hopefully it goes all right. But bearing in mind this is going to get some weathering on it, some sand and dust. You're not going to see it a lot anyway. More exploded views there of the engine, under tray, petrol pipes, exhaust system and all of that. And then all your fuel tanks, your fairings, seat cowlings and things to go on the back of the bike and the front. Two-piece fairing, need to get rid of the seam. And then your decal placements on the back there. Quite clearly shows you all the numbers on the decals and yeah, where to apply them. So yeah, looking forward to that. Looks nice and clear. Here come the sprues, folks. Look at these bad boys. Size of that already. Uh, you've got your, your tank there, tank halves. So I'll probably join them together and then go for a bit of stealth assembly. There's your chain links. As you can see, they're very, very tiny, but this all clicks together and then you run your blade along the sides of the links. There's the wheels. We're going to be stripping the chrome off of them with a bit of oven bright. So I'll show you how I do that. Next up, <clears throat> we've got the frame and the under tray to protect the engine. Bit of the swing arm there. And then the wheels, uh, wheels, the tyres there, nice knobbly tyres there. You've got your screws, hoses and things like that. And then you've got your engine, cooling fin, exhaust pipe, fork tubes and your decals just tucked underneath that. So we'll whop that all in the box like so. And then we'll have a, a quick looky loo to see where we can make a start on this build. I'm looking forward to this one. Going to be a nice, nice quick short series on this. So we'll go ahead and we'll start getting this all laid out, ready to go. Let's going to flick through the instructions and see where we're going to start. Section one there says the wheels. So we're going to have to uh, prep ourselves for these. We've got the disc brakes there. I'm going to drill these out. Do all the vent holes and things like that. So we'll get the drill on them and, and sort that out. Just want to sand any nubs off the edge there. Once you've done a couple of bits, you'll get used to it. So I literally just cut close to it. Run the scraper around it and then sand it. You can see the holes there. I want to drill them out. This is your chrome wheels. I'm just going round and cleaning up the spokes because there's a little bit of flash in a few places. We don't want that. I can hear you humming the tune. But if I scrape that off now, then when I come to de-chrome these, I won't have to fettle with it because I've already scraped them. So just running my blade along there, not 
gouging it. I'm just literally scraping off any flash that's going to be uh, intrusive. And then we've got pickle jar there full up with oven bright. So I'm going to decant that into this plastic pot. Quite gloopy stuff. It's been used many, many times. So it is looking rather scuzzy. But it still does its job. And then pick these up with the tweezers. And then we'll drop them in. Like that. I'll probably end up putting all the wheel sections in there. And leaving this just to see how long it takes. But normally, on a good day, it will like be minutes. Uh, on the more stubborn crime, I'll tend to leave it in for about an hour. See how it goes. And if it's really stubborn crime, then obviously it'll just stay in there until it's gone. Nine times out of ten, you'll see it sizzling away quite happily. Uh, to me, a chrome literally falls off when it's dunked in this stuff. Whereas some other chromes can be a little bit more stubborn. But there's no hurry. There's plenty of time. Let the, let the solution do its work. But already you can see some of them wheels sizzling up and going white already. So just pop that to one side. And we'll carry on with the engine halves. And I'm just going around denubbing. Everything's been cut off the sprues. And I'm just running my scraper around getting rid of any really prominent nubs. Getting shot of them now. And quickly dry fit both halves together, like so. And if you do end up with seams, I tend to put a bit of the Tamiya white cap along the seam. Let it go off and then I go round and sand it all smooth. So I'm using the gloopy glue on these halves so that when I squish them together, the excess glue will squish out and I can use that then to go and fill the seam or any undulations. So let that all dry it. Now we've got the different fins again. I've just cut them all off. You can see the diagram there just in front of my left hand of the exploded part. So we'll film a couple of these and then we'll scoot ahead. But just sand the edges of each piece. Line them up on your mat so that they're in sequence. Quick dry fit and then start gluing them all on. And these build up very quickly, these little uh, sections. Just want to smooth that down just to make that nice and flat because one side's sitting very slightly higher than the other. So we don't want a drunk uh, cylinder head, do we? So, And then we can just rest that on there now. And that is now sitting a lot better. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Again, we'll have some white cap on there because that will fill up any voids, any gaps that you, you need filled. It will do that at this stage. And then line it up. You've got little cutouts and shapes that, only fit one way on this. But again, follow your instructions. And it will go together very well. Again, got a couple of peg holes there, and some of these are offset. Each layer you go up, you'll have two peg holes, and they're different sizes and angles. So you can only put the pieces in one way round. But just check and double check. Because once it goes off, it's gone off. Just line the next piece up like so. And there it is. And gradually that starts building up into a nice detailed engine. So we can pop a bit of glue on there now that we've had a dry fit and the check. Don't need too much glue. Don't have to really glue it on. Just put a couple of bits in. Press it home. Let the glue do its thing. And we can just start building these up now. Excuse my twitches. There you go. Pop that one on there. Just like that. That fits. A little gloop. And then just press it on. Bosh. 
that simple, folks. Just let that do its thing. Yeah, I'm happy with that. We're just carrying on now, building this up until we've completed this section. I think there's 15 or 20 of these plates to go in. There's quite a few of them. Can be a bit daunting at first, but just persevere with it, folks. You'll be fine. There you go, look at that. And as you can see, we've gone ahead and we've done all the others. And that gives you a nice cylinder head then, cylinder block. And then you'll have your cylinder head to go on top of that in a moment. But that has gone together really well. I like that a lot. Nice, cl nice clear detail. Bang, get in. Oh. Want to make brum brum noises. Again, check your instructions for your orientation of this head unit. Because it is important. You've got a little cutout just at the front there for the spark plug to poke out of. So we just want to shave off. There's two little tabs on there that you don't actually need. And it will tell you in the instructions just to scrape them out of the way. All you're interested in is the tinsy wincy look peg. And then that will let you put the head on the correct way. Put a bit of white cap all around the edges, like so. Pink. And then just drop that into place. Let it locate. And then give it a bit of a dab. And then you've got two little covers go on the front and the spark plug pop in as well in a moment. That. This little little bit of gubbins there, a little linkage. Just want to get the angle of that right. And it will show you the angle of that in the instructions. So just have a little looky loo. And it will give you the angle that that sits at. And you just put on the little caps. And this is all fine little details. Just to bring the engine detail alive. Like that. Just check that you've got them level. And just press them home with your finger. And we've got another one there. They're very tinsy wincy little parts, these. So I'm hoping that I don't ping them off the bench because the carpet monster's licking his lips next to me there. I might sacrifice a bit of sprue in a minute and just ping it to the edge and let the carpet monster have something to chew on. There you go. Just go round now and start scraping some of the other bits and getting them all prepped. And this is getting ready for the suspension components. So I just want to get this seen as a mould line that goes right round this piece. Most frustrating, but a little bit of time with your blade. Just give it a light scrape. Let the blade do the work. Don't have to gouge at it. And then a very light rub with the sander, just to smooth any bits. Now I have a big old magnifying glass just on me left there. So if you see my hand go off, it's just that I'm holding the piece under the lens so that I can see the seam has gone. Again, just run your blade around and that will go like that. Have you some of that. That's carburetors done. So we can glue them on. And I'm flicking between little bits and pieces here. Just to speed up the video process. But you've got your carburetors and your little manifold going on just on the back of the engine block there. Let's have a look at these wheels. They should be done by now. Look at them. Oh, cooked. And you end up with a bit of a brown film over the bits. But just give them a soak in some water. Go over it with a toothbrush. Uh, it's only a coating that goes over the plastic for the chrome to bind to, but yeah, get it off. Uh, make sure they're fully dry, and then I go over them with a bit of IPA once they've air dried. 
I then, like I say, get the IPA and the toothbrush and I'll go over them again before I prime. Just like that. Just to try to get as much of that out of the way as possible. We can glue them together. And that'll give you a nice wheel. And I still run the white cap around it to try and get rid of the seam, even though it's going to be buried in the tyre. It's false of habit. But also, it's good practice on uh, how to get rid of seams. Because, yeah, practice on a bit like that. Even though it's not going to be seen, if it goes wrong, it's hidden, in it? But it just lets you practice your techniques, folks. Again, there's a couple of little pegs in there to get these the right in the right place on these wheels. And I'm going to clip all the way around this because they are a little bit warped, these wheels. So I'm going to use all my pegs and my clamps just to pin these edges nice and tight so that the wheel shape itself and the spokes and everything all line up because it's a little bit warped in a few places, the wheels. Just one of them things. I probably popped it out of the mould too quick, but I've got all my metal ones on, and then I'll probably put pegs in between just to really give this maximum clampage. Looks a mess, but it, it threw that wheel up nicely. So let's just bung the last few of these on. Like that. Have you some of them? Just quickly wipe a bit of extra fin around the inner edges there. And that will then suck straight into any gaps. And uh, the extra fins are welding glue, folks. So it, it will do its thing. Just work your way around the inner circumference of the wheel there. Like so. And the extra fin will find its way in all the crooks and nannies for you. And it's easier to do it at this stage and spend a little bit of time on it. And then we'll do the same on the other wheel as well, just to get that all done. Whilst that's curing, let's have a play with a the suspension there. That's all gone together. And test your springs work, folks, like I'm doing, because sometimes the glue can find its way in there and you don't want it binding. So I always give it a little quick, little quick test just to make sure that it's doing its thing. I think just like that. Because obviously I want the outer part of the casing halves to join together, but I don't want any glue going inside. Once I'm happy with that, I can put a little clamp around it just to pinch it all together. Now I'm running right down that edge, like that. And that should now do its thing like that and the clip in place there's just holding the spring back whilst I glue the plastic halves together once it's all gone off I can then release that and the spring will pop down and we'll have a fully working suspension get in there right uh, both halves of the brackets there going on join this this will join to the swing arm once it's all gone together we might as well put the brackets and that in now so that that really can uh, glue itself together because these are quite fiddly little bits. I want this to really bond nicely. And it's all got to be painted yet anyway, so Let's have a look, see if I can acquire a clamp there. There you go. Just want to get something across there just to pull that together a bit better. Okay. Might do it. Put a clamp just at the back there where them two pegs are. Just to pull that together like that. Right. Let's have a look at the frame. You've got two halves to the frame there. And they'll be joined with a bit of Tamiya white cap glue. Slap it right in there behind the headstock and down the front and across the backbone. Really want to 
glue this in there, but be careful the inner tube or semicircular part you've got the front fork bolt to go through. She doesn't want any glue in there if you can help it. Plenty of clamps and let that dry. Again, go around the little tiny posts, a little bit of glue on them and get them all together so that your frame lines up, folks. And then this, with obviously judacious video editing, gets left overnight to really cure. And then I'll come back to it the following day. Right, let's pop this swing arm together. Like that. Just make sure that's gone together well. And then again, that will be left to cure over there. Uh, trim off any little spare bits and pieces hanging off of this and sand them because these two halves I've got a de seam this so that it becomes one piece this is the under tray and this is going to be done in like a bare metal so i i don't want to see the seam on it so we'll get that white cap glue on there to join that together and then once it has cured i shall then paint over the seam with some tamiya white cap so that i can sand it down and lose the seam join Let's just clamp that piece on there. Let that do its thing. You can see there's quite a recess there, so we need to get rid of all of that. Just running some glue down the exhaust halves, getting ready for where the join is on those, where it goes two, in, two into one, even. Whilst that's curing, we can now just start buffing out the backbone on this frame, gradually getting rid of the seam. But again, you don't have to go too mad because bear in mind your fuel tank is going to obscure pretty much most of that. And any other fairings at the front will hide the down tube. So I could say don't worry about it, but we do, don't we? Because we know it's done then. So I'll just put that over. Over the back there on a the peg. And this is all getting ready for the paint stage. So I tend to just clip everything on uh, crocodile clips. Ready to go in the spray booth. I want to make sure this silencer is going together. It was a bit warped again. So I had to do a bit of shapage. We've now got both halves of the seat unit. Again, that will be a, a de seam job. I just want to dry fit this just to see what it looks like. And there is a mud guard that will go up underneath and thread through this. So uh, yeah, try not to drop it. Go this mud guard in my left hand. So we want to glue the both halves of this and let it go off. And then I shall feed the mud guard up once it's dry. Because it is going in under tension, and if the glue hasn't gone off, it'll just pop both halves apart again. Again, just engage the little lugs, like so. And then just give it a little press, and the glue already, you can see it just starts squishing out, and let that go off as is, and then you can use that sand down against. And that will smooth out and fill any of the voids along the seam line. And that mud guard, as you can see, is quite a resistance fit. So and it'll pop it straight apart if you don't let it dry. So let it dry, come back to it. Now these are the tank halves. You've got an inner and outer section on each half. And as you can see, you've got quite a gap all the way around it. So this is where your putty is going to come in handy, folks, because you want to lose all of that. Don't worry about it just yet, because you want the glue to go off. But before you prime it, just go around with your putty, or a bit of sprue go, anything like that. Fill them seams in, give them a smooth, and yet yeah, your world will be a happier place, folks. 
I'm going to just put a bit of white cap in some places. That will fill up some of the smaller voids. Work my way along there, like that. But like I say, the bigger ones, they will need a bit more, uh, a bit more filling. There you go. Again, just creating a slightly sticky surface ready for any of the putty and the sprue goo to bond into. Like that. And again, you can come back with your sanding sticks and all of that lot and smooth this all off once the halves are on there. Just want it to start squishing in a few places. There you go. Uh, let's just knock them back on there. Have a little bit of sprue go, give that a shake. And see so what we can achieve, shall we? We want this about the consistency of skim milk. And all this is, is I, I tend to use pieces of leftover styrene sheet. And I just keep it in a pot once I've got enough. If I've got a quarter of a bottle of extra fin that's looking a bit manky, a bit scuzzy, a bit grey, cloudy, whatever you want to call it, I then make a bottle of sprue goo. And that's all this is. And once you've got what a bottle made, you just keep replenishing it with fresh styrene and top it up every now and then. If it starts getting too thick, thin it down with a bit more extra fin. And honestly, it is liquid styrene. Easiest way of describing it. Because the extra fin is a melting glue, as you can see, it's melted the styrene sheet into this. And then when you brush it along any seams, it will just self-level, find its way in. And you're basically using kit plastic to fill the kit. And the secret of this is let it go off, let it cure. Be it one day, best, you know, 48 hours, it ain't going to hurt. Then come at it with your sander and you don't end up chasing the seam around them. Gotta let it fully cure, folks. But it will fill quite nice voids. Anything that the sprue goo don't fill, that's when you break the putty out. And just work your way around, picking up any little gaps. And that'll do its thing. As you can see, I'm working my way all around there, and it is filling up quite nicely. Like I say, when it dries, if it has shrunk down at all, give it another coat. Let it dry again, then attack it with a sanding stick. It won't let you down, folks. Nice little trick this is that we use in the community, and it really does save a lot of our ache. Very simple, but very, very effective. There you go. Couple of little bits just there that I want to grab. One there. And that one there. But there. And then that can now sit there and go off quite happily. And then we'll come back at that with the sanding sticks and all of that lot when it's cured. We've got the same to do with the other half as well, so we'll get that sorted. Let's quickly check on this piece. See whether or not that's gone off. I could start sanding the edges of that. I've just got it under my magnifier again because I'm a man of a certain age. I like to be able to see what I'm doing. I will endeavour not to knock me sprue glue over when I uh, put it back on. Here's the other half of the tank to do. And look at the gap on that. That's quite a big one, isn't it? Yeah. No. Uh, just find the areas that it marries up the most so that we can get some glue in there and it bite in a few places. And then we can come round and start doing that really bad edge there. But as you can see, it's quite a quite a bad fit this half. 
So I'm going to slap the gloopy glue in there and let it really get in to all of these voids on this side. And then anywhere that's pretty close, I can use the extra fin because that's a welding glue. And that will dry a lot quicker and it will just hold some of the bits in place long enough for it to start to bite and then we can get the sprue glue out on it. This is a two piece fairing. We want to glue them halves together with Tamiya White. And then again, we're going to have to lose the seam on that and it goes right down the middle. Very frustrating. But I noticed when I did the Suzuki build for remodels that Tamiya have started doing one piece fairings now, which for us bike builders does make our life a lot easier. Again, bit of pressure with your thumbs. Let the glue squish out. And that will give you something just to sand back against then. And the beauty of this white cap stuff is it just lets you have a little bit of fiddling time as well. I've uh, got some putty out here, uh, umbrella putty, because the swing arm's got a couple of melted bits of plastic where the ejector pins marks are, and the plastic has shrunk right down. So you end up with these two really annoying dips in the swing arm, and I just using a bit of umbral putty with a bit of umbral uh, poly just to fill them in. We can try the mug guard now because this has gone off. Little tension fit there, but that now presses straight in. There's a little peg just on the top there. Sits in place, just like that. And then we can run a bit of extra thin along there. And that will bond that into place now. But this is where leaving it to cure comes into its own because, as you saw earlier, that popped straight apart when we did it earlier. Once the glue's gone off, it's all fine. Well, we've popped the grill in and we've started to have a go at the seam on there. And there's one that goes across the top there. So we've been sanding it with a 220 grit. We've gone over with a buffer and just keep working at it. Go back to it bit by bit by bit. Same with these tank halves. We might as well get some of the ancillary bits and bobs, handle bars and bits and pieces like that. Get all of these denubbed because we can start getting stuff ready for priming and the spray booth time. So I want to go round and pre-trim a lot of these pieces just to get rid of all the nubs, all the mould lines now. So that when it comes to paint this, I haven't got to worry. So keep an eye on how you're doing it. Have a look at your colour call outs as well. I mean, the little black square at the back there with the holes in. I've got about half a dozen of them. And I look at the paint call outs. So if I've got chrome parts or silver parts, they go on one. Body panels go on another. Anything black goes on another. You get what I mean. So you can just pick them up and you can know, especially if you've put a little bit of tape on the side with a colour you're going to be using, you can go right and paint in red. What needs red? Ah, that one. Everything in that tree, you know, is going to be painted red. So you can just whiz through your painting. I find it really easy doing it that way. And there's stuff that I've just printed out. So just putting that little cap in there on the suspension now on the front fork and it should now pop in just like that. And you've got a spring in there and a little retainer. This lot here I'm going to keep on the sprue. We'll spray them and I can always go around and detail paint bits as and when I need to with it. There you go. So let's just have a look, make sure I've got all my bits and bobs ready. And all prepped. Cut the little bits just over here. I'll grab them. We can start painting. I'm using a yellow primer for a reason on these wheels. Because they're going to be red. And I always spray red over yellow. And also because the panels are going to be white 
I shall use the yellow primer with that. I haven't got pink primer at the moment. I've run out. So I'll take a gamble and I'll use yellow. And it should, in theory, give me a nice cream effect. This frame is also going to be red. So that gets a coat of the yellow primer. Going through the airbrush there quite happily. Uh, for those that want to know, I'm using an H&S Infinity airbrush. And this is going through around about 24 PSI. There or thereabouts. Quite a humid day. So, yeah. Not thinned primer. It's coming straight out the bottle. Again, just thin coats. Come back at it. Do more than one coat. Same with these. Just scoot it on there. Like that. Whizzing away quite nicely. And this is a 0.6 needle in this H&S so that I can get the gloopy primer firing out of it quite happily. So it does its job quite nicely. And then I'll just pick that back up like so with the clip. Same with the fair in there all the way round. Go round any edges, any shapes, any indentations and then feather the paint over the rest quite happily like that. And again, same with the seats around there. This is all going to be white. You might say, why, why, why paint a white piece white? Well, it's because you can, isn't it? Got to be lacquer paints as well, and why not? This primer will sit 48 hours. I shall sit and leave it. Engine's going to be black. Uh, might as well use the uh, yellow primer in there. It's in the airbrush, so it's cleaning it out, putting another different colour in. We might as well just give it a coat. The seat there, we start putting some red down there. Now, believe it or not, I'm actually using the Citadel paint in the airbrush. This is Mephiston Air, and I want it down as a base because when I dry brush the seat, it will give me the tonal change in the colour using the, the Citadel system. So that's why I'm using a Citadel paint on this seat. And I deliberately got the Mephiston Air for this reason. And then I can go over it, a bit of Evil Sun Scarlet, and just dry brush the edges and, that and, and pick out little different wear shades. So that's why that's got that on there. Mephiston Red, folks. Air. Get in. We're now using Tamiya LP Red. Whiz around the wheels like so. Nice coat of that on there. I will be doing the frame as well. Make sure you pick out all the bits of the frame. There are going to be bits of the frame that end up getting hand brushed at a later stage where some of the, the fittings are different colours. But because the bulk of it is going to be red, might as well spray the whole thing. I can always come back and pick out the little highlight colours as and when. Now we can start doing the silver. And this is an LP. Around the fault legs there, sparkling silver going down on this because it'll have a clear orange over the over one part of the forks. There you go. You've got a titanium silver on the exhaust going on. And then we got the swing arm again with the titanium silver. Again, once it's had some known oil and things like that on it, it will just give it that, dare I say it, die cast look. Yeah. Same with this under tray. And when I come to weather this, there'll be scratches and, and bits of wear underneath it. So get that all done. Have you a bit of him. 
and then LP black, gloss black, all over the engine there. Make sure you catch all the little areas between the cooling fins, because yeah, hence why I did it yellow so that I could see where you may have missed any, because obviously a different colour primer, you're not gonna you're not gonna necessarily see where you've missed, whereas the yellow against the black sticks out like a blind cobbler's thumb, doesn't it? So same with the handlebars, bit of gloss black, have you a bit of that. Just work your way around all the little bits and bobs on it. And this is where having more than one of these stands helps because like I say you're different colours and they'll all be in different cake tubs cure in there. Stop the dust getting on them. This is the uh, following date. We can now start putting some LP white down. There you go. Like that. And again, this will be multiple coats over the day or over the next sort of 30 minutes or so. Normally, let it go 10, 15 minutes between each coat. Boom. Bob's your uncle. Can do five minutes. Depends on your environment. That's what works for you. There you go. Look at that. And again, all the little voids, all the little deeper parts get done first and then scoot around, get all the under edges done, any deep curves, and then you can come back then and you can start filling out the panels then. Just like that. I am wearing a respirator. This is a voiceover, by the way, that I'm doing. So, uh, yeah, at the time that this was filmed, I had a full face respirator on, a 3M respirator, because obviously lack of paint. You don't want to be breathing in the fumes, folks. So make sure you got your respirator on. You can get them from a model, so. Just work your way around it. I'm not worried about full coverage at this stage. This is only the first layer. And it's like the tank there. If you notice, I scooted through right through the deep curves there first. So that they've got a bit of paint on them. And then just work your way around the edges. And then you've only got to fill the panels in then. And then we'll come back. And we'll start putting another coat down. Multiple coats will go down. Three, four coats easily. Just to pick it out and get it covered. Just like that. And that's the beauty of the video editing. You can speed it right up. So we're going to get ready to wrap this episode up. And I'll see you on the next one.